the you know, the thing, the thing with me is like, I grew up in, in, in a musical household like before I even came to Pennsylvania, you know what I'm saying? Like, my grandfather, I don't know if you know this one, but my grandfather is the one, like when you hear the Shaft theme song, you hear the hi-hats on that, okay. that's my grandfather playing that. On the on the uh the, the song um from Anita Wars that you can ring my bell, that's my dad playing the percussion on that. You know what I mean? And they fucked him out of the, the publishing on that particular song. They, they came and got him we was living in Memphis at the time. They came and got him out of jail to come play percussion on that song for Anita War. At that's the time crazy. my pops was twenty five years old. He didn't know nothing about publishing or nothing. You know what I'm saying? They came and picked him up from the jail. They had him play the song that motherfuckers hear on the radio right now. Wow. He didn't know nothing about publishing. They paid that nigga like twenty dollars for some shit like that. And that's all he ever got from the song. Wow. And to this day, every time my pops hear that song, he turned that shit off because my family supposed to be rich off that shit. He just didn't know the business. Damn. So from 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 taking that L right there, that taught me. And then plus on top of that, like when I was growing up, um, motherfuckers like Shaka Khan, Isaac Hayes, the Barcade. The OJs, Damn. Well, for all these legends used to be in my living room, bro. Oh shit! In my living room, feel me? Like when I used to come out, I used to come out my motherfucking room and see this shit in my living room at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like I really grew up around that. Yeah, you know right. energy. Like, I got this shit honest. Like even if I ain't even want to do this shit, first hand. Yeah, if even if I ain't want to do this shit, my nigga, I would still be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like all the little shit that my pops went through. Like this nigga used to tour in Japan, all types of shit, bro. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all the shit that my pops went through, like that's that was my goddess through this whole shit. My my pops used to be my manager, so he taught me the whole like the business. Mm. You feel me? Like I was in the big ass motherfucking rap group back in the day. I was the producer nigga. And then it was like I was basically like the backbone of the whole situation. As yeah. far as the, like we had shit on MTV, we oh, had our shit. shit in the stores with the barcodes, all, the fucking newspaper, all that shit. It was oh, real shit. shit going on. You know Damn. what I'm saying? At the time when I was like 15 to 16, we had a rap, a big ass rap group called UG Family. We used mm. to do shit up here and, and down there and all that. But throughout the course of it, it was like I w it was a learning process for me. Feel me? Yeah. So I was always, I was like the RZA for the whole shit. Like I was the beat making nigga. Architect. And, and I was the nigga that kept everything together. Put you know it, what I'm yeah. saying? Some shit happened when me and my nigga stuff on. We robbed the store. You know, when we was kids and shit. We got locked up for the shit. I had to go down state do a little time for it. Oh, you Stephen know? Streets was in it too? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I had to, you know, do a little time for the shit, whatever. And so when I came back home, when I came home, I'm like, yo. I don't know no shit about to be popping because I know when I was down, I know niggas was still grinding. I get Hold out on. and I find out. Rewind that real quick. You said Stefan Streets was in a group with you, like the rap group that was yeah, on the DT and like all that? Yeah, was like a big ass Wu Tang. It was oh, called shit. Gucci Family. Oh, shit. It was like nine rap niggas, and we had three singers. You know what I mean? And I was like the main producer, and it, you know, they kept a lot of the shit together. So. Uh huh. Okay, okay. So, like I said, when I, when I, I went down state in like two, in 2002, if I'm correct, you know what I'm saying? I get out and shit, and I see like, yo, niggas ain't really doing nothing. Now, the whole time when I'm down state, I'm, you know, I'm around nothing but Philly niggas that's, that's sharp yeah. with this rap shit. You know what I mean? At the time, I'm like, you know, I rhyme too, but, you know, primarily I'm a producer. But uh -huh. when I'm there, nigga, I don't got no keyboards and drum machines and nothing. So I gotta pay attention to the more of the, the rap side, feel me? Hell but at yeah. the same time, I was a young nigga, I'm around all this shit that's going on. And to keep it 100, which was, I was a little intimidated by everything that was going on. I'm like, yo, these niggas are really. So I'm at with Spado, matter of fact. K Block and, and um, Camp Hill with Spado. Yeah, that's good money. Yeah, bro. so, you know, we was going, you know, we uh, fast and all that together. So, oh, shit. You know, niggas on the block, with they rhyming or whatever like that, and I'm just watching. So every time I watch, I'll be the one that's beating on the table, keeping the BPMs for niggas so they can rhyme. <laughs> but the whole time, my celly, he knew I could, you know, I could rhyme or whatever. But I guess he, he believed in me more than I believed in myself. So anyways, yeah. motherfucking, I'm watching the way these niggas is, is, is putting their shit together. And every time I'm watching this shit, I will go back to my cell and start writing it. You know what I'm saying? Talking about putting their raps together? Correct, yeah, okay. the way that they was, you know, they, they, they cadences and yeah, shit like yeah. that. I was really, like, paying attention to me. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that was a whole nother little politic or whatever, but I was just seeing how certain things 
was going on with that, and I was just like, yo, that's kind of wild. You feel me? Yeah, it's crazy. But, um, but yeah, so you know, back to what I was saying. So I'm watching, I'm watching Philly niggas rhyming and shit like that. I'm, I'm using that to sharpen my skills. You feel me? Yeah. So, um, I, they was getting ready to send me off to Kohana. Feel Fuck me? is that? To, it was, yeah, the boot camp. Joint. Boot camp. They was okay. ready to send me off to there. You feel me? Uh -huh. So it was like the day before I left. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know I was leaving the next day. But it was like the day before I left. We all go back, lock down in our cells and shit. My cell. My cellie, he like, hey, niggas, niggas, niggas is on the gate, they rhyming and shit. And my cellie like, yo, yo, my cellie about to spit something for y'all. So he like put me on the spot. I, I wasn't even ready for this shit, but he like put me on the spot. So he like, yo, sir, older nigga, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. He like, yo, go ahead, show these niggas what you got. Fuck it, I hear what you in here writing. You can keep up with these niggas, show these niggas what you got. What up, what up? So I'm like, all right, fuck it. I have my little tablet or whatever like that. I'm the youngest nigga in the jail, like at the time. I was the youngest nigga in there. What was the jail name? It was, uh, well, I was in Camp Hill. Camp Hill, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. Cape Block. That's where I was at. So, anyways, I go to the gate. I spit my shit. And, like, niggas was fucking with it. And that's what really, like, boosted my confidence and, 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 and helped me get sharp as far as on my rhyme and shit, you know what I mean? Definitely. So by the time I got out and I linked back with my niggas and shit, they wasn't used to me rhyming like that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I come back home, I'm like, all right, well, what's, what's up? We get on this music shit, you know what I'm saying? I start rhyming and niggas started peeping, like, yo, Dre, he sharpened his skills when he was down the state, like, real shit. Absolutely. But it was like, by the time I came home, that whole little rap group or whatever, that shit was dead. Niggas was in jail, niggas was... Their motivation wasn't there, so I was like, all right, yeah. bro, I know it's on me. Like, all this, whatever I gotta do, as far as this music shit in my future, it's on me now. You, you know gotta what be I'm the saying? Backbone. I can't live off of, okay, these different artists I can produce, or whatever like that, it's on me. So, from, yeah. from, from that point on, like, that's when it's been like, P.A. Dre. Before that, my name was Midas Touch. I had a completely different name. Oh, shit. I never heard that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I Midas Touch. It's like Melito, uh, a few like concrete thoughts. Like Them niggas, they knew me when I was still going under that name. But when mm. I said, you know what? I'm about to step into the light as an MC and a rapper. Matter of fact, okay. it was crazy because how I even got my name, people be asking, like, yo, how you even get the name like P.A. Dre? My nigga, it was because of fucking barbershop when I was in Atlanta. Uh, this nigga, this, this barber shop I used to go to, I used to get my front films. Yeah. And it was another nigga in there, his name was Dre. So every time I came in there, they would yell out, yo, PA Dre is here, to, you know what I mean? <laughs> or whatever. So it became a thing that stuck. Like every yeah. time I come there, they would, that's what they would scream out. Like, yo, it's PA Dre. So I remember I was telling my nigga stuff on, matter of fact. I'm like, yo, I think I'm about to switch my shit. And just go with that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Then he asked me, like, yo, why would you, like, go with that? I said, because you think about it. I'm down here in Atlanta, and I'm still repping where I'm from. And I'm yeah. repping where I'm from no matter where I go. And I always wanted to, to to use my real name as far as my moniker and shit. But there's so many different Dre's, yeah. Andre's in the industry. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, I always wanted to use that. So, I'm like, all right, well, the way that line up, boom, I'll run it that way. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when I switched it from the... The Midas Touch name as a producer to PA Drader, MC slash producer. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So since then, I've been working on the whole PA Dre brand. Feel me? Absolutely. More or less, so, more or less on some solo shit. Like I said, been in groups here and there and things like that, but you know. Give me a rundown on some of the uh, production credits. Anybody that's, you know, like, worthy of mention that you got on your jacket right now, your resume. Um, what we doing right now? I know Zeke some of EPK. EPK. Yeah, we, 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 we going to, you know, give you the rundown. The Zeke is interviewing you for WCB, bro. So, you know, shout out to Zeke Dallas. Right. Absolutely. What's up? All right, so, as far as production, as far as production credits, man, I, I, I did a nice amount of shit, so sometimes I'll be forgetting. But I'm gonna try to see what I can name off off rip. You know, I've I've done um, multi productions for the nigga Mad Fowl. I've done productions for Neef Bug. I've done productions for Skino. I've done productions for uh, uh, Skibo Debo. I've done some shit for him. Mm. Uh, God damn, let me think. This some shit off rip. But, uh, Rain, Man. Uh, Rain Man, yeah, you know that's my homie. Like that's who I, I mainly produce. For. Absolutely. Yeah, Shout out to Rain Man. Rain, yeah, for Philly, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, you know, by the name RJ Payne now. He switched okay. the name and shit, but it's Rain Man. Like, 
Philly legend, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's my bro, like that's who I work with tough, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I, you know, I did shit with him, battle rap, um, female uh, official. I work close with her, you know what I'm saying? Do a lot of shit with her. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of some shit off, off rip. Uh, I'm not facts. Mickey Fax, yeah, I did some shit with Mickey Fax. Um, some of my work's been hosted by Kid Capri. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um, got what? some shit you know, working on with with, with, with Ali Vegas and shit. You know, so we touched bases earlier today. So Legend. You know, that's 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 about to go down off rip. Wordsworth from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? If y'all remember Lyricist Lounge and all that. Okay. You know what I'm yeah, 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 no yeah. doubt. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That, that, during that era, like on some real shit during that era, Wordsworth was one of my favorite rappers. Mm. Like I used to watch him on Lyricist Lounge and seeing him get busy. Like he was one of my favorite favorite rappers. And I still think he's like one of the best lyricists that ever came from the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? Um, I gotta check him out, man. Correct. I I've done some some uh some production for, you know, for Gully TV. You know, sound some background music. I've done that for Gully TV. Uh, okay. Let me try to think what else, what else I'll do.